hello everyone welcome back to my channel if you're seeing me for the first time my name is atlanta and glad to have you on this channel so this will just be part two i'm just going to jump straight into this of how god delivered me and my testimony um i promise to go more in, in detail about it in the last video so i'll be doing that today so let's do this <laughs> So the, the first time I got like some a supernatural encounter, I would call it that. Um, I feel like it's very, it's, it's sort of like a, a robbery or sort of being ungrateful if we really don't take time out to testify of God's goodness and all that he has done for us. And in, it's not only are we taking away from being an encouragement to others, but also to ourselves to be able to proclaim the name of Jesus and to be bold enough to testify of what God has done for us. And specifically, I'll be talking about how God delivered me from spiritual attacks. And I didn't really think I had any. So anyway, let me get into it. So this one time I visited this local church, I must have been in my early teens. I had gone to pray like a regular Sunday, it was a Pentecostal church, and they're doing their thing, praying and worshiping. Like I said, we were not regular churchgoers, but we were allowed to go to church. So I remember that day I went to church, I went by myself and they are praying and worshiping and doing their thing. Lo and behold, at some point in the service, I start to scream. I don't know if you've if you ever gone to a church where you've seen deliverers of people screaming and demons just coming out of them. That was me. And I was so young and I'm on the floor. I'm screaming and screaming. I can't really remember, to be honest, exactly all the things I was doing, but I just know that I was on the floor and I can't remember how long I was doing that for all I know is after the end of the service I went back home I can't remember if I told my mom or not but I went back home and that was really playing on my mind I was like what was that I knew that it was it was demons coming out of me I was aware of that because I must have been maybe saying things um, <clears throat> but I went back to my usual business. I don't remember going back to church after that. I must have been scared, rightfully so. I must, and I was quite young. I would say maybe 14, 13, around that age. So, yeah, so I had to return to school, but that really stayed playing on my mind. And that's when I was first aware of, of the spiritual realm and prayer having an effect in such a powerful way. And so my, I, I, I started to pray more because I realized that when the praying was happening, that's when these demons were coming out. Now, or whatever was, they were, they were coming out or making an effort to come out. I don't think they wanted to come out anyway, but they were coming out. So I go back to school that term and I just remember thinking that was on my mind. As you can imagine, I go back to school. In the school I, I went to was Catholic. So there was no one going to lay hands on you and pray for you that this demonic influences can come out of so you can be delivered from whatever that was. I had no idea what that was at the time and so what i do remember doing one particular day at school it must have been a tuesday or thursday i can't remember quite vividly but i know that it was one of the days at school we had a special meal so we used to have different meals every day and that day we had this rice and chicken that we all looked forward to and i remember telling myself you know what i'm going to forego this meal so that i can fast and pray 
everyone went off to, to, to the kitchen. I stayed in the classroom, got my Bible, nothing dramatic. I just got my Bible and was reading it and praying. Um, I spent the whole lunchtime period doing that, basically. Now, after lunchtime, we had a chemistry, chemistry, but it was a lab, lab class. So we go to the, lab, to, to the laboratory and we're doing tests and, you know, um, we had these stools that we sat on. I'm sitting on one of them with those and I'm talking to my friends and I kid you not, guys, I was feeling funny after this praying. Like, I wasn't saying I was feeling sick. It was only one day I fasted and it was not, like I said, it was from morning to like maybe when we have dinner. So it wasn't a lot. It wasn't the type of fasting that would cause you to feel faint or feel dizzy, but I was just feeling just feeling a lot of things inside me. I can't describe it. So lo and behold, I'm in the laboratory and I fall off this stool. Like I just fall down. And that my, of course, a few people carried me to take me to, which would be like a school clinic. But I wasn't just like, I didn't just fall down. Um, not like how you faint no i was screaming i was saying random things the best way to describe it is like i was out of my mind nothing had triggered me all i had done was pray and fast by myself and i was carried and i was taken to this school clinic put on one of the hospital clinic beds and i was out of it i was screaming my head off saying random things like basically a similar encounter I'd say to what I had had in church but this was more intense and um, the bible says that this, some of this cannot go away but with prayer and fasting and I believe that fast did something powerful in the spiritual realm so I'm taken in the clinic this is at school mind you and I'm put on bed and for some reason, I can't remember whether it was me that asked or someone suggested that these two boys who were quite known in school for praying to come and start praying for me. I was in hospital, I remember, that's what I remember is two boys praying for me and I'm just shaking, I'm just screaming, I'm, I'm moving my body. These are faint memories, I can't remember exact details, but I remember that. And nothing anyone could do would stop me from screaming. No, nothing. I don't know how long I was doing that for. But what I do remember is the nurse coming. And at that point, because there's nothing they could do to stop me, had to inject me with something to fall asleep. And you would think that after I had woken up, I was fine. Um, no. But after I'd woken up, I was not screaming, but I was weak. I guess from all the shaking and that, but I was feeling physically sick. I had no illness. And this is what I'm to say that there is a supernatural world out there. Like whether you're a Christian or not, there are things that I'm sure we experience that we can't even describe. Maybe not as intense as mine, but I was so introduced to this other world at such a young age that right now there's nothing no one can tell me and convince me that this doesn't happen this doesn't exist because i was in that and i felt sick it must have been for three days and i just had no strength for anything i had no sickness you could you could um pinpoint to and say she has malaria but i was in bed for weeks demons can make you sick like they can make you physically sick sometimes you're feeling low and you don't even know what it is and i think we complicate this thing but i i personally feel the enemy is out there to attack to kill to steal to destroy and he's that he does this to everybody and to everyone christian or non-christian he's constantly looking for a loophole to to enter our lives and to oppress us i don't know up until this point if i was a born again christian if i'd accepted the lord and as my lord and savior that day i don't know 
um, to this day, if you ask me to pinpoint when I received the Lord, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you because I was always aware of God. I was, I'd always been praying to God. I always fit, like loved God from my young age, took myself to church with no one prompting me, even without encountering this big move where I, now I was firm in my faith. I was always con- writing letters to God as a kid. So I can't tell you that I know the day I gave my life to the Lord. Specifically, I think it was on a Tuesday this year, this time. No, I don't have that experience personally, but I was always aware of God, always prayed to him. So now this encounter goes on. Thank the Holy Spirit. Thank Jesus. I get better from that. But it left me thinking something is still not fully right. And that's where that hunger and prayer I mentioned in the first video. If you've not watched that video, go back and watch it. Uh, and it's just me explaining really how, again, what the Lord has done in my life. So that's when I started to pray that the next school I go to, I was finishing up with that school and going to the school, there is prayer. Because I know and I was aware that I needed prayer. Uh, so that I could be delivered from these things because these I don't know how many I had I cannot tell so I was praying to God that at least the next school I go to they have some sort of prayers and stuff like that because I spent most of I keep mentioning school because I spent most of my time in school I was in a boarding school so before I mention that I'll go into my the next part I'll go into my family history so I was wondering to myself, like, I've never gone, personally, I've never gone to know which doctor. I've never stopped it, stepped in anything, stepped in any sort of, you know, I know I'm African and, you know, our uh, Africans, we have not really experienced Christianity for such a long time. So we are still very much attached to our ancestral worship. But I had never been taken to any sort of ancestral worship. So I kept wondering, why am I having these manifestations? I thought people will have them is, you know, you've gone to a witch doctor or you, you know. However, I got to find out that in my family, there is a, I had a relative, an uncle to be much more specific, who was Amuchwezi. <laughs> so you say it makes sense. And he wasn't like small Amuchwezi. He was known and big in that in that area he was a very big known mutualist so i realized i'm not far removed from as i'm not a generation far removed from um generational curses and demonic things so probably who knows probably my uncle prayed for me he was my uncle, like a direct uncle. Though I, had, I, I, I wasn't around him and I didn't even know him. I say I still don't, but I've met him. I had never visited his home, but these things continued on. Um, and now they were affecting me, uh, even if I had never had any encounters. So when we are speaking about generational and the Bible says that the blessing goes to the fourth generation, but also curses go to the fourth generation. If a generation does not repent, the sins of the past generations catch up with current generations. That's why it's very important to break generational curses and to separate yourself and to even repent on behalf of the generations before you that worshipped other gods other than the only God, Yahweh, the God of the Bible. So now being aware of that, it made sense. I realized that I'm not far removed from these things attacking my life and wanting to influence my life like my ancestors before. And so thankfully I did go to that new school and listen. I had applied to many other schools, but I did not apply to that school. It was the Holy, it was God, it was God that led me to that school where they had a strong scripture union, a lot of prayer, like intense prayer. And of course, I continued in this new school to, to pray 
but this time I had a lot of other believers around me who also believed in in praying and 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 deliverance. So we are praying, and they they start to we start to pray normal prayer. I didn't go to anyone. This is past say to say pray for me. I need deliverance. But as we are praying again, I said to manifest. Now there's demons, and this time I remember it. It was so wild. I remember vomiting, like vomiting non-stop. Like you're just vomiting, vomiting. Your tummy is moving. It's like there's something inside your stomach. You're shaking. Your whole body is shaking. Like so you're so strong that really no one can hold you down. And that I felt like my deliverance took forever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I had a legion inside me or something. But they continued to pray almost every prayer session. I was, you know, those people in church that you see and it's them every time. That was me. That was me every time. I got to a point where I was just, and it's embarrassing. Like, I don't know. I've heard people say, oh, this person is pretending i don't know how someone would love to be pretending rolling on the floor like that is not a glamorous way to pretend <laughs> i will tell you as someone who went through that it's so embarrassing like after every prayer session you feel like it's you it's like you have a problem you have you feel so insecure you don't feel confident you think everyone is walking around thinking this person has demons in them it's not a good place like it's no one wants to walk around um manifesting every prayer session but this is what i will tell you there's a deliver deliverance is different there are people who will be prayed for and delivered in a day um but I have had so many testimonies of people who have had to be delivered over time. God's working in everyone is different, but also you're dealing with demons, principalities, and these things do not want to go. And I remember when they would be praying for me, I would be saying things, my voice would change. And you're like, physically, it's like you're, something is inside you and it's just not wanting to let go of you. And my deliverance took long. I was fasting and I was praying. At some point, I even didn't want to pray because I didn't want that to happen to me because it was happening every time I prayed. At some point, I'm like, I don't want to pray because I don't want that to happen. But I thank the Lord that he delivered me fully fully delivered it took long but finally the lord did come through for me and this is how i i started to change my mindset about it as much as i wanted people to pray for me i got to a point where i realized because at sometimes i wasn't in school to have people pray for me and at at home i didn't have a family church I was I didn't have a family church I always hopped from church to church because I didn't know these churches I was trying to find a church that worked for me I was trying to find a place that I could call home and I just couldn't find one or I hadn't found I don't think I actually whilst I was in Uganda I had a home church you know up to the point I left I don't think I had one I just was visiting different churches um so I got to a point where I said, you know what, I need, I need to, first of all, I got to a point where I was like saying, scared of praying. So at some point I would not pray because I didn't want me screaming and rolling on the floor. Because even when I, in my own personal time in prayer, when I would be praying, that would still happen. So I forsook praying for a while because I just was, didn't want to deal with this. But at some point the Lord started to speak to me about one, not being afraid, being bold, and starting to carry out my own like personal deliverance, reading scriptures and the word in the word of God. And also, every time I would feel like I need to manifest, I'll be like, no, devil, it's not happening. You're not going to make a, a shame, a, 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 a spectacle of me. You're going to come out of me. 
without any drama. So I gained this confidence and I started to, to speak. I started to pray. I started to say, oh, I'm not going to do that. I started to resist whatever it was. For me, that's how I, I got my breakthrough. Because I now when I, I didn't have any people praying over me. And I didn't want people praying over me. So I would tell myself that I, I, I would declare I'm a child of God. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. The, the one that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. I would start resisting the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee. And to be honest, sometimes it would be diff difficult for me to tell the difference between the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and whether, you know, this is something coming out of me or demons coming out of me but now i go to a point where it doesn't matter and you will always tell like for example when you're praying the holy spirit comes upon you sometimes you do have physical reactions and so your hands will shake i know for me my hands shake a lot but it it wasn't it isn't it wasn't i could tell the difference because it wasn't rough like like when i was getting delivered um, and I started to declare the word of God and I started to say no to the enemy and to no to shame that I felt that caused and no to, to, to the influence and cutting ancestral ties and cutting generational demons and cutting and repenting on behalf of my ancestors who had practiced uh, worship of other gods. Like I was saying, I, I, my uncle, I, I personally believe is still a maturity to this day. Um, so I decided to, to separate myself from that and sanctify myself and say, I'm a new generation. I'm starting, I'm going to start a worship of the of Yahweh, the one true God. Um, and the generations after me, I'm starting something new. I'm starting something fresh that will not be influenced by what my ancestors did. And I am so grateful to God for delivering me and setting me free from every demonic oppression, from every thing that had held my family for years through worshiping. God, our God is a jealous God. And there's no way you think you're going to go and worship another God and he'll be cool with that. It, it's not, it doesn't, one of, our, of the Ten Commandments is worship no other God but me. So if you're watching this and maybe you've had similar experiences, those just to be, you know blunt in case you've been wondering those are demons and they can leave in the name of jesus if you don't know how to pray just declare the name of jesus over your life speak the, the word of god get the bible and just read read over yourself pray over yourself now we have audio bibles let the word of god saturate you all the time and do not let demons scare you and fast 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 the bible says some of these will not go away, but with prayer and fasting. And also read these examples in the Bible of men who were delivered um, physically. And sometimes, not everyone I personally think will manifest physically, but that doesn't mean that you don't need deliverance. Uh, that doesn't mean you don't need to pray deliverance prayers over yourself because we all are different and God works in us in different ways. But sometimes it's very clear to see demonic influences over your life. Addiction, that's a demonic influence over your life. Sexual sin, that's continuous, that you've struggled with, but it's hard to overcome. That's a, that's a principality in that area that wants to ruin your life, to kill you, to steal, to destroy. These demons are here to kill. Like, that's it, to destroy us. Um what other thing if you have this strong things especially in this day and age everything has a medical explanation um you have a certain tendency and that's a medical explanation and i'm not saying sometimes it's not right diagnosis but sometimes you need to pray you need to eliminate that that might be a stronghold in the principality that is holding you down from achieving everything and to have complete and total freedom do not be afraid. The Bible says, do not be afraid for I am with you. I am your God. I will protect you and I'll deliver you. 
Thanks for watching this video and I hope and pray you've been encouraged and you've been blessed. Share this video. Do not forget to subscribe and like. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Bye.